and friends. Last week, we learned how Jesus also became an outcast and how the religious leaders hated him so much that they'd want him killed. Before, Jesus had huge crowds of people following him, but now this crowd of people began to shout, No! Away with Jesus! We want Barabbas to be free instead! Barabbas was a criminal who was already in jail. He was a murderer and he had been found guilty of trying to stir up trouble in the city. The people wanted Barabbas, a criminal, to be free instead of Jesus, the righteous son of God. Pilate couldn't believe it. He tried again to rescue Jesus from the people. I don't find that this man has done anything wrong. But the people shouted louder, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucifixion was used for the worst of criminals. It was a horrible way to die. This crowd of people wanted Jesus to die a painful death, nailed by his hands and feet to a wooden cross. Jesus didn't deserve to die at all, and he could have stopped this at any point, but he was willing to go through this to pay for the sins of the world. Pilate ended up listening to the people. He let Barabbas go free and gave the order to crucify Jesus. Jesus had already suffered a lot. He had been beaten, spit on, and made fun of, and people even tore out pieces of his beard. He was, being, he was bleeding and bruised, and now he would suffer on a cross until he died. That day, two other men, who were also criminals, were crucified with Jesus. The soldiers took the wooden crosses and the three men and put nails into their hands and feet to nail them to each of their cross. Then they lifted the crosses, dropped them into the holes that had been prepared to hold the crosses up. Even in all of his suffering and pain, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Even though he was going through this terrible suffering, Jesus loved and forgave these people who were doing this to him. Je remember, Jesus died for me. But the people watching didn't care. They laughed at him, made fun of him, and even gambled for his clothes. They said things like, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself! They continued to make fun of Jesus as he hung on the cross, not knowing that Jesus was doing this for people like them. Jesus' love for people was so great, he willingly suffered. The people didn't understand that Jesus was suffering for their sins. They continued to make fun of Jesus. Even the criminals crucified with Jesus made fun of him. One of them said, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us! He didn't think that Jesus was powerful because Jesus hadn't saved himself from the cross. But then the other criminal said, Don't you fear God, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. He knew he and the other criminal deserved to die because of their wrongdoings that they had done, but he also knew that Jesus had done nothing wrong to deserve death. Then the man said something amazing. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This criminal was showing that he believed Jesus was God's son. Jesus looked at him and said, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus was saying that this man's um, sins were forgiven and he would come with him to God's forever home in heaven. In fact, this was the very reason Jesus, the perfect son of God, was suffering and dying. He was dying for this man's sins and the sins of the world, even the sins of this criminal who had done terrible things. While Jesus was on the cross, the sun disappeared, even though it was the middle of the day. Jesus cried out loud with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus, the perfect Son of God, was dead. His followers, who had been watching from a distance, were heartbroken. Jesus was gone. How could this be part of God's plan? Joseph, an important religious leader, watched Jesus die. But unlike, but unlike other religious leaders, Joseph believed in Jesus and did not want him to die. He went to Pilate and asked if he could bury Jesus' body. Pilate agreed and Joseph carefully took Jesus' body to a brand new tomb that Joseph owned. On the third day after Jesus died, some woman came to put spices on Jesus' body, which was a custom or tradition in their time and culture. But when they got to the tomb, the huge stone that had been covering the opening had been rolled away and two angels were standing there. And we know the rest of the story. Jesus wasn't dead anymore. He came alive again just as he said he would. The woman remembered Jesus had told them that he would rise again. They ran back and told Jesus' disciples that he was alive. Many people saw Jesus after he was raised from the dead. Today, he is in heaven, ruling as king of all things. He invites you to believe on him as the only way to be forgiven of your sin 
and so that we may also have that close friendship with God.